Hi guys. You will be shocked to see that it is a gray, gloomy, rainy, soon to be stormy day. Here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm as we all await the uh, the remnants the sloppy seconds of uh, Hurricane Debbie will be rolling in here in a few days. Uh, and Lord, and <laughs> I tell you, as the as the whole world continues to mold, uh, it is now a, a gray, gloomy, depressing Tuesday afternoon. What would that be? August 6, 2024, and, uh, <clears throat> what? Shut up. And, uh, I'm over here on the mainstream media tracking, tracking Debbie's progress, and, uh, I just, uh, we're just going to have a straight-ahead chronicle of the collapse right out of the mainstream media. Now, of course, uh, at least two of these three stories would uh, not lead any clueless moron to have any idea they were chronicling the collapse of anything when it's chronicling the collapse of everything. And we're going to start as we're going to pick three of these stories. There's probably a dozen. This is just called, you know, plain old boring business as usual on the planet. Uh, right here, uh, you know, illustrating what Tim Garrett uh, was talking about years ago how there is no fucking way that uh, business as usual can just go on on this planet. Uh, it, it, it ain't going to happen. That something has got to give. The planet cannot handle what these three stories about, and of course uh, being cloaked in the single biggest uh, bright, well, there's so many. What is the single biggest bright green lies? You know, just how, how the mainstream media is just out here just spouting these unadulterated horseshit, bright green lies, how renewable energy and all of this shit's going to save the planet. Uh, 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 unadulterated horseshit just being spewed out uh, of their ass. And uh, we're going to start right here in our own country with the Energy Department. Of course, I guess the lame duck Joe Biden Energy Department awards, awards $2.2 billion to strengthen the electrical grid and add clean power. Clean power. If you want to see what clean power looks like. It's, uh, it does not look like a water wheel. M make no mistake about it, guys. This is the definition of sustainable, clean, green, renewable energy. There, there is nothing in this photograph that is rem remotely clean, remotely green, remotely renewable, and sure as shit is not sustainable. This is the face of the bright green lies. This is what the renewable energy transition I I is going to look like. It's going to look like bigger and bigger and bigger uh, uh, these, you know, these monster planet-eating <clears throat> electric transmission lines and uh, that call for all of this mining and all of this shit. Is there any uh, clueless fucking moron believing this unadulterated horse shit? Uh, that uh, wrapping the planet uh, in, in power lines is, is going to save this planet 
uh, from rising carbon emissions. It, 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 it's just it, it's just unadulterated horseshit, and how anybody can uh, swallow this crap is beyond me. <clears throat> The Department of Energy on Tuesday announced 2.2 billion dollars in you mean you know of taxpayers' money in funding for eight projects across 18 18 states to strengthen the electrical grid against increasing extreme weather advance the transition to cleaner electricity and, and of course, most importantly, meet a growing demand in power. The money will help build more than 600 miles of new transmission lines and upgrade another 400 miles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there you go. Uh, the investments will provide more reliable, affordable electricity for 56 million homes and businesses, according to the DOE. Yes. And, and, and I love this, this energy secretary whatever her name is, somebody Granholm, uh, you, you know, talking about all of these uh, giant transmission lines. They'll help us to meet the needs of electrified homes and businesses and new manufacturing facilities. And all of these growing data centers that are placing demands on the grid. And what she's touching on here is uh, w with the advent of artificial intelligence just beginning, uh, you know, in its infancy here in this country and across this planet, th this the unbelievable uh, demand on this planet being caused by artificial intelligence. Uh, chat, GPT, or whatever it's called, all of that shit. Uh, just an un it's going to be, you know, Bitcoin mining on steroids, the amount of energy that it's going to take to uh, process uh, all of this data when you've got 8 billion clueless morons uh, asking artificial intelligence how to boil a fucking egg. You know, we, we are so helpless. Uh, good Lord, they're breaking down. Here's a big project in California. Uh, in response to a growing demand for energy. Uh, here is this big project in New England hooking up all of these offshore wind turbines that are getting blown apart and washed up on shore. Uh, here's Montana. Montana uh, is breaking ground on a 415 mile long high voltage transmission line across Montana and North Dakota. Here's the Virginia. Uh, the Virginia Department of Energy will get $85 million to employ clean electricity and clean backup power at two data centers, one in Virginia and one in South Carolina. Good Lord. Uh, yep. Uh, and then uh, this is Max Luke, one of these energy uh, and analyst, quote, 
if you look at the scale, I, I quote, these investments, this $2.2 billion in new transmission lines, these investments are certainly a step in the right direction, and they are the right types of investments. But if you look at the scale of the challenge and the quantity of grid capacity needed for deep decarbonization and net zero, it's a drop in the bucket, close quote. According to Princeton University, the United States, this is just the U.S., will need to expand electricity transmission by roughly 60%, 60% by 2030, and may need to triple, triple it by 2050. And this is exactly what uh, Tim Garrett uh, w w was talking about, you know, I, when I interviewed him, in, you know, in, in 2020 or 2019, you know, when, when he was saying that over the next 30 years that uh, humanity I I is going to, to triple its demands on this planet. Uh, it, 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 it ain't gonna happen. It, it, it is not going to happen that between now and 2050, we're going, supposedly going to eat more of this planet than, than, than we've eaten in uh, the last 10,000 years or whatever. It can't happen. It's a violation of physics. This shit, it can't happen. Uh, and it ain't going to happen. Because we're going to fucking collapse and crash and burn between now and then. And uh, let's go from, uh, from the good old USA to, of course, the literally the single biggest shithole country on the planet, India. Yes, India has pushed hard for solar, but as its billions, as its billions of people demand more power, coal always gets the call. Yes. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in the midst of a months-long re-election campaign this April when he took to social media to trumpet a remarkable feat and a historic milestone for his country, crossing one billion, one billion metric tons of coal and lignite production. It was proof, Modi said, of India's, quote, commitment to ensuring a vibrant coal sector, close quote. A month later, for the third year in a row, his government ordered some coal plants to run at full capacity to meet high electricity demand during the increasingly hot summer months. Uh, there you go. For the first six months of this year, India has responded to major energy demand from its growing population and greater cooling needs because of extreme heat, in part due to climate change, you know, from burning coal, by relying on its coal-fired plants. The country also plans to add more coal plants. India's coal demand rose nearly 10% uh, last year, or about 105 million metric tons, and the biggest jump by percentage for any country, according to the IEA. Demand in China rose 6%. Yes. I love this, uh, this clueless moron, 
Carlos Alvarez, lead author of the IEA report, quote, we know the Indian government is serious about its climate commitments. Yes, but he did acknowledge that the, quote, huge need to ensure people have electricity, close quote, in India, and added, quote, we don't believe that India will be a front runner in the coal transition. Do you think so? More than 70% of India's electricity needs are still being met by coal. And on combined with this fact that India last year became the world's most populous nation with 1.4 billion people. Uh, while India has millions of people mired in poverty, millions more who are being lifted from poverty as the country's economy develops, and many of those will be able to afford some relief, otherwise known as an air conditioner. Do you think so? Uh, and there you go. Uh, this goes. Uh, this is Ramadar Yadev, 45, who sold their fertile farmland to a coal mine. Uh, quote, in this region, everything is connected to coal, at least for the next 20 years, our region and India as a whole will depend on coal. I am sure of it. And there you go. And then we're going to go down under to Australia to see how uh, Australia is being raped and pillaged to uh, to power uh, Singapore. Singapore, you, you know, if you had to... Uh, Singapore, I guess, and Dubai, and maybe more and more Phoenix, Arizona, if you had to pick the most uh, unsustainable place on the planet, uh, it would be Singapore, uh, an absolute, uh, j j just planet-eating nightmare. <clears throat> Massive new undersea cable approved to provide electricity for two countries, as well as over $10 billion in economic value. Yes, so this is uh, what, you, you know, this clean green energy in, uh, in Australia looks like. So what you have is horizon to horizon uh, solar panels with these new high tension power lines for every square inch of as far as you can see, every square inch of this landscape is covered uh, by these goddamn solar panels and strangled by these uh, tr transmission lines. Uh, so uh, Singapore can be have their hundred story uh, skyscrapers air conditioned. Sun power from above may soon be captured down under and sent 2,671 miles northwest to Singapore via an underwater cable providing renewable electricity to northern Australia along the way. Yes. Sun cable was 
uh, has gotten all its key government approvals and is hoping to be sending power to Singapore in the 2030s. And there you go. Uh, the plan, which involves a solar farm covering more than 29,000 acres. 29,000 acres. Well, 640 acres is a square mile, is one mile by one mile. Uh, 640 into 29,000. Good, good, good God, I, I'm, uh, is that 40 square miles, 45 square miles of, uh, of Australian landscape being obliterated off the face of the planet to send power, this renewable, clean, green energy to power up the single most unsustainable city on the planet. Singapore. All right. The plan, which involves a solar farm covering more than 29,000 acres, the sea spanning transmission line, and storage, will set world renewable energy and Australian economic development records and will provide about 15 percent of Singapore's electricity. 15 percent obliterating 29,000 acres uh, off the face of this planet to provide 15 percent of one city's electricity sounds pretty clean green and renewable uh, to me but it's part of an even bigger clean energy vision uh, this is one of these planet eating uh, PR con men quote this will underpin a new wave of green industrial development via prospective projects that include green minerals, green hydrogen, green e-fuels, and green data centers, he said. Yes, and this project is just one of a burst of big solar projects making headlines worldwide. In June, a 5.2 million panel solar farm in China was turned on, and in the, U the U.S., Adapture Renewables is working with Meta, you know, Facebook, on utility-scale solar installations to offset the energy demand to the tech companies fill in the blanks. Data centers where Meta Corporation is uh, just teaming up with these planet eaters, with the the disowning the from uh, from panel, you know, to grave, uh, to run their data centers. Uh, and there you go. These projects are important as they prove, as they prove that the sun's energy can, well, when it's not raining, reliably be caught, stored, and used on the grid, reducing heat-trapping air pollution 
from fossil burning sources. Yes. Uh, and this shit goes on and on and on. And there you go. And they're hoping to eventually add wind power to the mix. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It, 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 is there anybody buying, buying this bullshit bright green lie? These giant energy corporations with their green energy, clean green energy Uh, to power up the AI data centers, I need to ask uh, AI, uh, can the planet survive AI? Anyway, I got to wrap this up because uh, I have uh, guests coming in and I need to make sure my my hilarious solar generator that I bought uh, a couple of years ago has finished charging up uh, in the garage where it is plugged into the grid. So my uh, prospective guests can uh, run their lights and fan and computers tonight as they listen to the rain drum on the metal roof. Get out there and enjoy listening to the sound of rain on a tin roof. There will be no shortage of that to come. Bye, guys.